Servo motors, or simply servos, are integrated motors that contain their own power and control circuitry. They're generally available in two flavors. Positional, or angular servos, can be accurately driven to specific angles. They're often used in radio control equipment for control surfaces and steering. You'll also see them in robotic arms. Continuous rotation or 360 degree servos are essentially a motor with a speed and direction control in a handy package. G'day, I'm gonna show you how to drive servos with the PicoDev servo driver and a micro bit. We'll connect this hardware together to run both positional and continuous rotation servos. The PicoDev servo driver features the standard PicoDev connectors for daisy chaining to other modules. There's four servo channels, a high power input for providing power to the servos, a power LED to let you know that it's on, and an address switch. This address switch allows you to add up to three additional servo drivers to the same PicoDev bus. For now, make sure both these switches are in the off position. To follow along, you'll of course need a micro bit, a PicoDev adapter for micro bit, servo driver, and PicoDev cable to connect everything together. You'll need a power supply to power your servers because they're quite power hungry. This is a five volt, three amp power supply with USB-C connector. And of course, you'll need at least one servo. Servos come in all different shapes and sizes. I'm going to work with both a positional and a continuous rotation servo. Servos are usually packaged with some assorted mounting hardware. These are the servo horns and some fasteners to hold them on and secure the servo. You can even get some special servo wheels, which are great for continuous rotation servos. For now, pick your favorite servo horn, press it onto the splined shaft, and secure with a screw. There are four servo channels labeled one through four. Connect your servo to channel one. Servos usually come with a standard three pin connector with connections for ground, power, and signal. On the servo driver, these are labeled negative, positive, and sig respectively. Make sure you connect your servo correctly as they may be damaged if you plug them in the wrong way around. Your servo may have different colored wires to this one. In general, the darkest wire is the negative wire. You can also identify the negative wire on the servo connector itself. It's indicated by a small facet or chamfer that runs along one edge of the connector. That's the negative pin. Plug your micro bit into the adapter, connect your PicoDev cable to the adapter, and connect the other end to your servo driver. Connect to your computer with USB, and finally, connect the servo power. A note about power. Servos can be really power hungry. The regular PicoDev bus and cables simply can't provide enough current to drive these motors. So we'll need to connect an external power supply via one of the USB-C connectors. Exactly how much current your project really needs depends on how many servos you drive at the same time, how big those servos are, and how much torque they need to deliver. A good starting point is to budget about 0.7 amps per small servo and about 2.4 amps for a large servo. We're going to program in Thony today. If you've never used Thony with the micro bit before, check the guide for more help with getting started there. If you already know how to use Thony, proceed to the download PicoDev module section, select your dev board and right click PicoDev Unified, select save link as. And I'm gonna save this to a PicoDev directory in my documents. Do the same with picadevservo.py. Open Thony, navigate to where you saved your files and connect to your micro bit. Select both files, right click and upload to micro bit. Now return to the article and find the example for driving Angular servos. I'm going to start with my Angular servo. If you only have a continuous rotation servo, we'll get to that example next. Find the example code and select all of that code, copy with control C, and into a new script in Thony, paste that code. Click the green run button, and if prompted to save, I'll save this to my micro bit as main.py. And the servo sprung to life. Let's have a look at that again. The servo jumps around in about 90 degree increments, sweeps back, and then slowly sweeps 
again. Let's take a look at the code to see what's going on. We start the script by importing a sleep function and importing the pikadev servo modules. We initialize the pikadev servo driver using the initialization function, and that returns a driver object. We call this controller. Wherever you see controller in this code, we're referring to this physical servo driver. Then we call the pikadev servo initialization function. That takes arguments for the servo driver that we need to attach to, that's this controller, and the channel number that the servo is plugged into. In this case, we're in channel number one. So we put a one in the next argument. This returns a pikadev servo object that we simply call servo. So wherever you see servo in this code, we're referring to the physical servo plugged into controller at channel one. Controlling the servo angle is really easy. We just set the servo.angle attribute. We start by setting it to zero. There's a short delay. We set it to 90 degrees, another short delay, 180 degrees, and then back to zero. That's that stepped behavior at the start of the script. Then after another delay, we sweep the servo slowly from zero to 180 degrees, and we use a for loop for x in range from zero to 180 in steps of five. So our angle is going to jump in small steps of five degrees, and then we just set that servo angle to that value and do a short sleep. Now we could remix this code. I'll delete everything except the first two assignments to angle, so zero and 90 degrees. We could make a while true loop highlight everything, tab it into the true loop. And now when we run the code, this will just go from zero to 90 degrees and back forever. When we initialize a servo in this way, this is the default initialization that uses some default servo parameters. If your servo has an angle range different to 180 degrees, or it's making some funny noises, you probably need to stop and change the way that you set up the servo. If I comment out that setup, and uncomment this setup, this is the more explicit servo initialization that includes the minimum pulse length in microseconds, the maximum pulse length in microseconds, and the angular range of the servo in degrees. This is all information that you can get from a servo's data sheet. Now these default values are generally safe for most servos, but not every servo from every manufacturer behaves in the same way. This timing information is literally the timing information that gets sent down the signal wire. We won't dwell too much on exactly what it means, but suffice to say, these numbers ought to match the specifications for the servo in its data sheet. I've swapped my Angular servo for my continuous rotation servo. It's time to look at how to drive a continuous rotation servo. Jump back to the article, find the example for continuous rotation servos, highlight all that example code, and paste it over the top of all the code in main. Nothing for it but to run the code. Here the servo runs in both directions with different speeds and then comes to a stop. And it should stay stopped. If your servo continues to run, it may need some adjustment. There are two paths forward. If your servo has a tuning potentiometer, you can use a screwdriver to finally dial that potentiometer until the servo comes to a rest. If your servo does not have a tuning potentiometer, we can still tune the servo using code. Try making small adjustments up or down to the midpoint underscore us argument. This is the midpoint of the servo signal in microseconds. And it may be that we just need to tune this a little higher or a little lower until we find that zero point. And so in this example where I pretended I couldn't use the potentiometer, I found the zero point at 1550 microseconds. And of course, it will help with your tuning if you remove all of the other code so that the only command issued to your server is the stop command. Let's take a closer look at this code. We begin with the same imports and a very similar setup, except this time for pikadev servo, we're working with 
the midpoint and range arguments. These are similar to the min and max arguments from the Angular example, except with continuous rotation servers, it's a little easier to think about things as the midpoint and the range. That's because the midpoint is the point where the server will stop spinning. For continuous rotation servers, we use the dot speed attribute, and this accepts values between negative one and one. Here we set speed to one, which is fast in the forward direction, 0.2 to slow things down, and then we go to negative 0.2 to go the same speed but in reverse. And finally, we go fast reverse. And the script ends with speed equals zero to stop. Now, it's not too hard to drive multiple servos too. Here, I've connected one Angular server to each channel of the driver. Now, I'll remix the Angular server example. I'll start by removing all the code that we don't need. Each real server needs its own call to the initialization function. So I'll just copy and paste this line another three times and update the channel number for each server. Now we have four server instances in our code that we can control independently. I'll create an infinite loop that just sets each server to the same angle in a sequence. And there's a delay between each servo. When I run the script, we can see each servo travels 90 degrees in sequence. Pretty cool, right? Now it's also possible to daisy chain up to four servo drivers on the same bus. Recall this first driver has both address switches off. To add the second servo driver, I'll first set a unique address switch configuration by setting address switch number one. Address switch number two stays off. Then daisy chain the PicoDev and USB connections. And add an additional four servos. Now in the code, I'll be explicit with the address switch setting for my first driver, just so we don't get confused. Then create a second instance of PicoDev servo driver. Here the address switch argument ASW encodes the state of the address switches. Since address switch one is on, I'll put a one in the first column of the argument. The second switch is off, so there's a zero. Now for the familiar process of initializing the individual servos. And this time we're using a different servo driver. To tell them apart, I renamed my first driver controller A, and the second one is controller B. Eight is a lot of servos to write code for, so I'll put them all in this list called servos, and use a for loop to perform an action for each servo. Run the code, and there's eight servos being controlled individually. And look what happens when I drive them all together to produce this nice wavy effect. Now this idea is extensible for up to four servo drivers for a total of 16 servos. That's heaps of servos. So you may need to do some power measurements to make sure your power supply can handle it. And so there you have it, controlling servos with the PicoDev servo driver and a micro bit. If you make anything cool from these starter projects or you just have some questions, let us know on our forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, happy making.